Is the point guard spot an open question as to who will get it next season now that DeJounte Murray is off with Atlanta? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm Rose Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. No paywall. Go download it any way you can. And uh, yeah, we're going to be discussing the point guard spot. I get it. It's perhaps a little too premature. The season's still months away. But nevertheless, the idea is coming up because of Blake Wesley. So far, perhaps the best spur on the court out in Las Vegas Summer League. But is he going to push, uh, you know, guys like Josh Primo, Trey Jones? Is it even an open question? Is it Primo's to lose? We're going to be discussing that as well on, as well as getting to a report that an end of an era could be uh, winding down in San Antonio. Who is helping me today? He is Sweep the League's very own Rudy Campos. Rudy, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. Any update on your training? You know, how's that going? Uh, losing more weight? <laughs> uh, thanks for having me again, Jeff. And uh, still, still around the two nineteen, two twenty range. So right now is the time where I kind of just hit that wall for a little bit and just got to keep breaking on through like a juggernaut. Well, uh, hopefully you will um, continue dropping those pounds and making us all look bad, making us look <laughs> bad, Rudy. They really are. I could I could never make you look bad, man. You you've got the the body of a god. So no, I don't. Right. No, I don't. Have you seen my love <laughs> handles? I hide it well. I, I hide them well. So it's all about clothing, you know. A little bit of an extra jacket here and there, and no, no, I don't love handle. It's just jacket. It's just fabric. That's all it is. It's not fatness <laughs> coming out of my sides of my uh, gut here. But yeah, Rudy, you know the um, summer league is well underway. Summer Spurs are 0 and 3, but you know, it's not a matter of record out there. It's a matter of player development. That's what we want to see. And right now, you know, we talked about this yesterday in, in Lockdown Spurs about Blake Wesley. He's been the most consistent spur. Uh before we dive into that point guard spot, uh, what are you what even what are your takeaways from Blake Wesley? Are you making much to do about nothing because it is just summer league, or do you think there's something there that the Spurs have? Well, you know me, I can probably be a Debbie Downer most cases. And Blake, Blake Wesley is actually playing really, really good, um, probably better than expected uh, when it comes to where he was drafted by the Spurs. Uh, but the thing we got to understand, it is summer league. I do get that completely. He's averaging 18.7 points a game, leaving the team in scoring. But again, when we've talked to him in the past before, like when they drafted Blake Wesley, it's his motor skills. He's got to learn to control himself. Once he plays under control, you're going to see a lot more improvements. I mean, he's not even shooting 40% from the field. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's just summer league. I don't take a whole lot into it other than the fact that he's playing uh, above expectations for the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, and the guy is not afraid to shoot. That's for sure. Yeah, he, he, he can't pass no. up a shot that he doesn't like, and I think he needs to work on that shot selection. Definitely needs to add some size to him. You know, he's getting to the rim. He's just a matter of finishing and absorbing contact. That'll come mm-hmm. in time. <clears throat> you, know, I, I, you know, you look at what he's done so far. I mean, with the shooting, he's showing that he can hit the outside shot, something that he supposedly, you know, said that, oh, my God, I, I my shot is so horrible, but could have fooled me. Uh, mm-hmm. The way he's shooting out in, in Las Vegas. But with the departure of DeJounte Murray, this does leave – the open question of who will be the Spurs starting point guard next season. I get it way too soon, way too early. Again, season's not months, it's not for a few months more away, but the 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 candidates right now are Blake Wesley, Josh Primo, and Trey Jones. Now, Primo likely will not play in the team's final game uh, now that he's under health and safety protocols. He's mm-hmm. played I, I know he's played two games out of Las Vegas, but I say a game and a half because he really didn't come on until late in that second half in that first summer league game. But nevertheless, um, have you been, were you, again, are we making too much of of, of nothing that Primo didn't really have that good of a showing out in Las Vegas in those two games, but he did though, but he did, but he did for that second half, but it's, it's, he's like, so it's so weird. 
Yeah, and, you know, the thing, I get the hype. You know, we haven't had basketball in a while, so now you've got a good look at the young guys in the summer league. And, you know, you've got guys making a stamp left and right, not just for the Spurs, but other teams as well. Just take it for what it's worth. You know, Primo coming in, like you said, about a game and a half. He's averaging 15 points in that, you know, a little bit of time that he's played. I wouldn't take too much into it. I mean, it was Primo being Primo. He's going to have his solidified spot on the roster, whether it be the starter or not. Uh, it's, you know, you can't take a whole lot out of summer leagues. And these, it's basically a, a glorified workout session for these guys, really. It really are. Right, so we'll still go ahead and dive into it now. Um, sure. No Murray. Open question, who is the PG? Um, is it Primo's to lose or is it somebody else? Wow. Okay. So, you know, after you and I were talking about this, uh, as far as what we're going to talk about, I, I really stepped aside and said that, to be honest right now, and it's not a popular pick, but Trey Jones is your starting point guard as of right now. I think it's going to come into – uh, the off-season workouts, how these guys perform in front of the coaching staff, what Pop sees in the coaching staff. I think Trey has the advantage just because he's got the veteran. He's got, you know, he's got all the skills you want at point guard. He plays more controlled when it comes to all three guys. And I think that's something that as a young group that you're going to have a lot of young starters and uh, you're going to need some control at the point guard position. Eventually, I think Primo works his way into the starting lineup to be the starting point guard. But I still feel him as the two guard right now, getting a feel of how to run the point. So you might see a lot of uh, DeJounte, Derek White type uh, backcourt when it comes to Trey Jones and Primo. Yeah, <clears throat> Trey Jones definitely is the steadier hand, the quote unquote veteran. I mean, was he third year in the league as junior season? So, but I mean, that's how yeah. young the Spurs team is. So, and he's shown that he can handle the the spot, especially last season when DeJounte was out late in the second half and Jones stepped in admirably. But Coach Johnson, Mitch Johnson out in Las Vegas, did say that Primo is the modern day guard. Uh, he mentioned mm -hmm. that as long as with Bla uh, Blake Wesley as well. Switchable. Can play multiple positions, can go up, can can you know facilitate and and shoot and you know all this stuff. The modern NBA guard, that's what he described Primo as, along with Wesley. Mm -hmm. Jones doesn't strike me that way. He he's he's undersized, uh, as as compared to like a guy like Primo. Primo's a, he's a big kid. Um, do you think that could hold back Trey Jones from getting that starting spot because a lot of these guards in the league now are switchable and they're bigger? Most definitely. I mean, right now, there is no – it's positionless basketball in the NBA. I mean, you could see a six foot six guy playing the center position just because he can spread the floor and play big at the same time. So it's positionless basketball. Trey Jones is limited. I mean, he's really just technically a point guard. He can't come off screens and, you know, make jump shots as consistent as, you know, other, uh, I guess, combo guards in the league. Right now, it is a disadvantage for Trey Jones, but I think to start the season off uh, with the San Antonio Spurs, I, I think Pop wants to see a little bit more control instead of just throwing guys out there, making all these mistakes, playing reckless basketball. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what the NBA is now. Just throw them out there, let them shoot left and right. I still think you're going to see a controlled start to the NBA season, and that's kind of where I have Trey just kind of coming in, maybe even the first five, ten games of the year, Kind of what we saw with Tony Parker coming into the league where Antonio Daniels was running the point for a while and then all of a sudden Pop let the reins loose with Tony. And Tony came in, led the starting you know group, and just became the player that he was. So I think we're going to see the same kind of transition this year with Trey. It might be just a few games of the starting point guard position, and then we may see Primo come in right away. Yeah, let's, let's look at what uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Trey Jones did late last season. Uh, in that final month of April, he averaged 12.3 points per game, 3.7 rebounds, and nearly seven assists a game. Mm -hmm. Facilitator. And uh, Matt, granted, the sample size was small, seven games played in April. But nevertheless, that's what he did when DeJounte was out. The month before in March, he was playing 20 minutes per game and giving you about six points per game, three rebounds per game, and four assists. Good numbers, you know, for a backup, but nevertheless, when he got the starting role, as you saw in April, his numbers skyrocketed. He shot 50% from the field and nearly 43% from the uh, three line, granting he only took two a game. So, hmm. if numbers don't lie, there's something there to work with. 
he can fill in admirably at the point guard spot. My fear is just that he might get exposed on the defensive end, you know, uh, teams backing him down or just crossing him up or putting him on pick and roll situations and whatnot. <clears throat> Primo, on the other hand, he's a big kid. We know, you know, I called him like, like the Spurs version of uh, young Vinny Microwave Johnson. He, he can cook fast. We saw that in game one of the summer league in that fourth quarter where he just went ballistic and scored with 11 points in seconds. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but that's how yeah. quick he is for offense. If this is a rebuild, do you think there is an argument that Primo should get that starting? Not if this is all about moving forward in the future. And, and you know, Rudy, hold that thought. I'm going to get your <laughs> thoughts about that and much more for in just a second. But I want to talk to you about Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of make and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. You have access to computers at home in your pocket. Go to rockauto.com right now. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Don't go spending up to 30, 50, even 100% more for the same part from a chain store or car dealership. We can just simply go to rockauto.com. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Those Rock Auto prices are reliably low for each and every customer. Go explore their easy-to-use website today. Find the solution to your auto part needs. Here's what you got to do. You got to go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car or truck, and write lockdown to their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. An amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. We're back with Rudy Campos right here on Lockdown Spurs. He is with Sweep the League. Follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League, and we're talking about the starting point guard next season. We're talking about Josh Primo just a little while ago. What about that idea that if it is a rebuild and you want these kids to flourish, throw them out in the fire to see what he can do? 100% accurate on that comment. If if this is a true rebuild, then Trey Jones is your backup point guard, hands down. Don't even even have a point guard competition. So Primo would be your starting. But if if this is a rebuild, which I would believe 99.9% rush reassurance that it is a rebuild, um, then that's what it needs to happen. It needs to be where these kids just go out there, make the mistakes they're going to make, allow them to play the way that, you know, that not that they want to play, but allow them to play a new style of Spurs basketball where we're seeing the youth take advantage of all the minutes that are going to be given. But again, it comes back to that question of coaching. Have we ever really seen, you know, pop, not necessarily in this situation, because we really haven't seen him in this situation during his entire coaching career, but are we really going to see Pop let go of the reins and understand that this is a young team, they need to learn and allow them to play free basketball without any repercussions? Because we've seen Pop's doghouse being brought on a lot of times with players. Is he going to be the same kind of coach or is he going to say, OK, you know what, this is a brand new team, a brand new era of Spurs basketball. Mistakes are going to be made. I'm going to understand it, but I'm going to teach them rather than berate them. Like if Pop wants to win, and I'm pretty sure he does, then you insert Trey Jones. As simple as that. Uh, exactly. Stick to your hand, you know, a better facilitator, a true point guard by definition. Um, and 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 there's that oppor- there's that chance. Uh, Brian Wright did speak to um, ESPN during a recent broadcast of a summer league game. And said that each and every guy, and he didn't single out just the rookies or the second years, he said everybody's going to get their shot to shine. That includes Trey Jones. Uh, hmm. But we'll see what he can do. But then there's Blake Wesley, who's at least, again, I get it, a summer league. And, you know, there's lack of chemistry among the team. There's newness of it. You know, it, there's, there's, you know, defenses aren't quite as tight as in the NBA. But in the sample size that we have, he's showing that he could be a, a you know a scoring point guard. He does at least in these games, Rudy. He hasn't shown the ability to facilitate. I mean, minimal assists, but he is a gunner. And the Spurs and well, the NBA is all about offense. Well, he's the guy. Too soon for Blake to get that starting point guard nod. Does Rudy Campos rather see him in Austin? Well, the first part of it, too soon to be the starting point guard, yes. We're we're talking years, light years, too too early for Blake Wesley to be the starting point guard. Again, you know, he could come in. He could make a huge impact. He could make the coaching staff, like, you know, 
squint their eyes and realize like what do we have in front of us here and just making them you know pop off the top of their head and everything he could make that kind of impact when it comes to the offseason workouts and you know preseason games stuff like that it is possible but I mean if you look at it on paper and take off you know what he's doing in summer league he's not ready for that point guard spot to be the starting point guard at least on paper there is a lot of flaws that he's got to work through and he still has time to work through them whether he's going to be cooking in Austin, I still feel the same way. You're going to see him be that guy that goes back and forth, back and forth. He's going to be on the active roster, more than likely going to be the 10th, 11th guy on that roster, get some minutes here and there, maybe get you know 20 minutes in one game, kind of like what Lonnie Walker did uh, during early his career where he pop would bring him in 17, 18 minutes and give him like two or three minutes the next game. But he's also going to be in Austin during those off days playing with the Austin team as well and getting majority of the minutes there. And that's not a bad thing. He's got a lot to work on still. Summer league is summer league. He's balling out. Props to Blake Wesley. You know, you're starting your career off right. You're playing great in summer. But again, summer league is not where you make your money. It's in the actual NBA Mm -hmm. league, the NBA season, where the talent is there, not in summer. Yeah, and also for Blake Wesley, I don't know if he's ready for NBA defenses like like in real that. game in season, you know, defenses when when they're gonna target him on the court for being the ring. I mean, Josh Primo went through it last year. He openly said it. He goes, "Yeah, I'm aware they're targeting me, and and every time they can, because I am a rookie." Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blake Wesley, too much too soon. Definitely gonna be in Austin. Likely staple to the bench. I do it. I do, and I hope he does get more NBA burn than Austin burn. I think that'll be the path based on what Brian Wright said recently. So. Mm-hmm. We shall see. But this whole point guard discussion could be over if the Spurs just simply give you a jersey, Rudy. And <laughs> on the court. My uh, my point guard days uh, of Central Catholic and St. Gregory's are over. Uh, I, I've attempted to make an NBA comeback, but, you know, when I got passed over uh, for Jason <laughs> Kidd, that really pissed me off. And I just gave away my I just gave up on my NBA dreams. No, don't don't give up don't give up those dreams, uh, Rudy. I, I'm still Rudy for you. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and put a pen to paper now. Um, uh, from uh, likely to be the point guard to riding the bench, how would you rank it? One, two, and three. Who 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 goes one in your list to the last guy? Um, being today as of right now, I I've got Trey Jones as a starting point guard. Uh, I've got Josh Primo as to a very close. Uh, 1B, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he gets the starting nod, like I said, depending on the rebuild. But uh, for Blake, it's three. I mean, he's yeah. he's pretty far down the bench. Um, he's going to be the starter probably in Austin when he plays. But as of right now, as far as active NBA Spurs roster, he's a far number three. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think that's about right. I think that'll probably be your starting unit or starting point guard, I should say, uh, when the season starts. Would not be surprised if a Primo slides into that one spot. You know, I can see the Spurs. I mean, well, then again, you know, Mitch Johnson said that, you know, that Primo is a modern day guard. So it's not unfathomable to see Primo play the two along with mm-hmm. Trey Jones at the one. I mean, that is possible. But if we're just talking about the one spot only, then, yeah, I think right now it's probably Trey Jones's to lose and followed closely by Primo simply because he has – a different and unique and physically just bigger guy uh, than, than Trey Jones. Not to, I'm not downplaying what Trey Jones is as a pro. He's a great guard, but is he better suited as the backup guard coming off the bench, leading the second unit or in the first unit? We got a sample of that last season when Murray was out. We'll see if Trey Jones can definitely do that moving forward. We're talking with, Rudy Campos right here on Locked On Spurs. He's with Sweep the League. Follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League. When we get back, we're going to be talking about the end of an era, possibly, in San Antonio. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sport development and league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Bet Online should continue to source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. I'm pretty sure they have the odds on whether Rudy Copples will make his NBA comeback. Just go to (laughs) betonline.net right now. It remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcast news uh, this season. They even got stat lines or betting lines on the Becky Hammond will return to the NBA. What free agents could uh, the remaining ones 
could land in San Antonio. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. We're back with Rudy Campos right here on Locked On Spurs, and we're discussing the latest and greatest with your silver and black. Now, before we get into this final topic here um, about the end of an era in San Antonio, possibly in San Antonio, uh, your thoughts on the uh, classic edition ABA throwback jerseys? I know you're loving it. Oh, God. I, I think saying I love it is an understatement. <laughs> um, I, I actually talked to my wife. I said, hey, birthday's coming up in August. I've got a list of names uh, that I want on custom <laughs> jerseys. So when she finally got to page five, uh, she was like, wow, okay, let's see what let's see what we can do. So I'm coming out with a lot of throwback jerseys, a lot of them. Yeah, those, those were nice. Uh, I, you know, the shorts, you know, very classic ABA early yeah. Spurs days. The first class, that was the first class of – NBA Spurs, those were the Spurs, the, the 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 uniform that they were wearing. That was it right there. There have been some fans yeah. that are already griping about it. They're saying that the words San Antonio across the chest is too close to the numbers. I've heard that. I've seen that the self tag takes away from the overall aesthetic of it. But it is the NBA, and that's just the way it is here with advertisement. But nevertheless, yeah. Um, pissed off about something like they got a gripe about something just accept the fact that you're getting a throwback jersey and shut the f up like for real hey rudy really getting all ticked <laughs> off at fans here yeah but they were nice though i, I liked them a lot uh, i thought they were just sweet i i actually been campaigning for those to come out before these fiesta jerseys because i think these young kids young spurs fans thought that there was a fiesta jersey back in the day there never was it no. was just Fiesta warm ups, but it, there was not a Fiesta jersey. The so Fiesta I thought colors. it was, it was Fiesta was colors, it. right? Yeah. I, I kept, I, I, and I was thinking, like, okay, well, then if we're going to do a true throwback, then a true throwback is what we're seeing now with the classic edition. But yeah, but mm-hmm. I, I'm right there with you. Uh, I think they're excellent. I hope to get one too. Coming out in September. So fans are going to have to wait a little while longer to get hands on those uniforms and more but yeah let's talk about a report that surfaced via bleacher report that we could be witnessing the end of an era in san antonio that is shooting coach chip anglin is being reported that he will exit the team following the end of his current contract didn't really say how long that contract is for uh you know didn't really say if he's retiring it just said he's just gonna depart the spurs you know could he land somewhere else or, mm-hmm. or retire. I did reach out to the Spurs for um, a response. Um, got, shocking. Got ignored. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, your thoughts on what possibly could be the end of uh, an era in San Antonio? For every Spurs fan out there, to every guy that's covered them, like you and I, for the media, we hope Chip's contract ends in like 2045. I hope that they signed him for that <laughs> long. But to be honest, it's kind of um, it's kind of the way everything is falling into place for San Antonio. Uh, the big three exited. You've got Becky exiting. You've had coaches move on from Pop's coaching tree to go and become head coaches. It's really just part of the game, and it's truly understandable. Chip's built a lot of players here in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. He's gotten them, you know, Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, you know, the unspoken one, basically. Mm-hmm. We've seen their games go from, you know, not saying mediocre, but great to just unbelievable. And a lot of it has to do with Chip on working with their shooting. Uh, with this this group of uh, rookies coming in and young guys, they definitely need to work on their shots. I hope, I'm sure Chip's going to be there this year. But after that, I mean, it's it's kudos to Chip, man. I mean, 2005 is when he started his first career. Mm-hmm. You're talking, what, 17 years with the team. It's no, it's no shocking that he may want to move on, may want to go to a team that has championship aspirations, help them win as well. Or if he rides into the sunset along with Pop, then I would say by all means go for it. Enjoy the rest of your life and do us a great journey. But I think he ends up leaving as soon as Pop leaves. So that's kind of where I, I feel, at least at the end of his contract, it's whenever Pop's ready to go, I think Chip's ready to go too. Yeah, it's just another sign that times are changing in San Antonio. Um you know, you know, we 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 seen them trade off 
assets, young, promising assets, DeJounte Murray. We're seeing coaches leave. We're, we're, we're now seeing, I mean, practically a staple in San Antonio, yeah, Chip England leaving. I mean, he's he's out with the guys every single pregame, shooting with them, teaching them from Matt Bonner to DeJounte uh, to LaMarcus. I mean, I've seen it, and uh, he drills them and drills them and drills them until they get it. You know, recently helped Keldon Johnson. I mean, Keldon Johnson was like overnight. He was like the worst three-point shooter in the league and then last season, and then obviously he became the, one of the best. You know, so obviously <laughs> proof is in the pudding. But yeah, it, you know, if this report is true, and I'm, I don't see no reason why it would not, but definitely why, wouldn't why do be. You, uh, I say, why do you not cut you off, But why do you think fans get so uproar about it um, when the news comes out? Only, and the only reason why is because previously from the Spurs, Chip was what an assistant with Denver and Detroit. In I Detroit, believe. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're talking twenty plus years in the NBA, and then another 10 years or so playing overseas and even a couple of leagues in the U S I mean, that's, that's a long basketball career and 20 years is usually that retirement time. So he could just, I I didn't understand the uproar. Yeah. He's 61. I mean, technically close to retirement age, Uh, but you know, 61 is like the new 50 now or something like that, you know, whatever the kids say (laughs) now. So I think that's, that's why too. And, but yeah, again, it's just, I guess also too, fans are seeing this as another sign of the glory days really being over, like the nail in the coffin, little by little. Obviously, the biggest nail in the coffin will be Pop's exit. But yeah, you're right. Who knows? Maybe this is the Chip's nose already that this is it for him and Pop. And he said, you know what? When you leave, I leave and whatnot. Again, it didn't say that he's leaving the game of basketball. It didn't say anything. He's retiring. Just said he's going to yeah. exit San Antonio at the end of his contract. We shall see. And for all for all we know, Rudy, his contract could last for another three years or something. But exactly. nevertheless, it is what it is. Yeah. But if yeah, it, you know, if he leaves sooner than later, then you know what a ride it's been. Help the Spurs win multiple championships. Um, staple on that sideline there, seeing him interacting with the coaching staff. So awesome! It's surprising that he was he never plucked away from another team. You know, teams always poach the Spurs coaches from Will Hardy to Ime to uh, Mike Brown to Brett Brown. But Chip was like untouchable or something. <laughs> they didn't let him go. Or teams didn't, you know, uh, say like, hey, well, he's improving all their shots. Uh, my, are their player shots? Uh, let's bring him on over here. So good for San Antonio. That never happened. But we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you have to say about the starting point guard uh, spot next season? Is it Trey Jones to lose as Rudy believes? Or maybe do I, but like me, I think that Primo could push for that starting nod. And what do you think about Chip England uh, reportedly exiting San Antonio once his contract is over? We want to hear from you. Before I talk, I'm going to let Rudy take the mic. Uh, tell us about Sweep the League. Yeah, so we uh, record every Wednesday, release the uh, episode every Wednesday. We're kind of just going over off-season stuff right now. But uh, we wanted to give a quick shout-out to uh, Darius Gaze out there for this first summer league. Balling, balling really well out there. He deserves yep. a, a shot with the Spurs. But definitely, we're just recording, and I'm always honored to uh, join Jeff every uh, every chance I get for Lockdown Spurs. So I appreciate it very much. You're always welcome here on Lockdown Spurs, Rudy. Subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, Smart Speaker, even on YouTube, and now on the Ken's 5 YouTube page. As uh, Rudy, brace yourself. Ken's 5 has graciously allowed Lockdown Spurs to be now part of their Ken's Plus app. So nice. check that. I know, I know. When they told me that, they go like, by the way, uh, Lockdown's on our Ken's 5 Plus app. I was like, get out. So I had to go see for myself, and sure enough, there it was. So no, no reason for you to not find Lockdown Spurs to listen to Rudy, myself, and all the guests that we have. Come on and share the mic with me. But for Rudy Campos, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.